I've wanted to machine this part my entire career. And they told me I couldn't make this part how I wanted to by grinding it on the blown. So I wanted to prove them wrong. So stick around to the end of the video to see if we can do it. Oh my God. Oh, what is this? Fantastic. This is what I hate about the it's, it's been a nightmare. We probably should listen next time they tell us we can't do something. Today we're going to be machining and grinding heat treated 4140 steel. Pretty much the greatest material of all time. Fine, maybe not the greatest material, but definitely one of my favorite materials to machine. I've designed this with a continuous wave profile, specifically because I was told that we could not grind a profile like this on our blown Planomat XT. So instead of finishing this contour on the mill, we're gonna bring it over to the blown and see firsthand if we can grind it or not. But first, we need to machine the material down to size and rough out the wave on the mill. And for that, we get to take the first cuts on our brand new BVM 5700. So we're gonna be putting it to the test as well. So let's get going. All right guys, so this material was cut out of plate stock. So all four sides had sawed edges. So we come in and we toe clamped it on some 246 blocks and milled down the length of the part to establish the 15 inch width. Then we come in and cut two witness marks on the length. That way when we set this thing up in vices, we can probe that milled edge and find the center of our stock. So let's get this set up, tore down, and get the vices put on. If you like what we're doing here on the channel and you want to support what we're doing, hit that like and subscribe button. And make sure you hit that notification bell so you don't miss a thing. All right, now we got multiple vices set up here and to quickly indicate them in, we've got this vise indicated and tightened all the way up. But these two vices are loose. Now I've set the spacing between them, but I've kept the bolts loose. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna clamp on this bar all the way across with all three vices. And then I'm gonna snug these bolts up and then I can come in and check with an indicator and see how close we are. Now, since I'm using the reverse side of these jaws, I can't clamp all the way down on this thin piece of material but I actually see that the back side of these jaws are ground, so we're gonna use this face instead. All right, now all the vices have been indicated in with each other. We're going to get the material put in. We're ready to start this second operation where we're going to deck the top face and mill it to length. So let's get started. All right, guys, so since this material was cut out of plate stock, it's been blanchard ground, which means it's parallel with the top and bottom, but it's not flat. As you can see, if I push on both ends of the vices here, we're getting some rock. So what we're gonna do is at the high spot where it's not touching the bottom of the vise, we're gonna insert some shim stock. Now I got the shim inserted in. Now you see I don't have any rock in the material. Now we're gonna clamp the vices, start this second off.
the second side is complete. We've got the top side decked off. We've got it face to length. Now we're gonna flip the part over and rough out the wave that's on the other side. All right. All right. We're roughing out this wave with a three quarter inch core six. Now we're running at 1,262 surface footage in heat treated 4140. That's insane. We're also feeding at 200 inches per minute. Now this thing's running through a lot of code really fast and it's not bogging down at all. Now we're only going about one times D on the axial depth, which is three quarter inch deep, but the machine is handling it fine. We're nowhere near the red on the load meter. Everything's looking really good. I'm really impressed with this machine. three is complete, our wave is roughed in. Now it's time to go over to the blown plano mat XT and we're gonna surface grind this wave to a perfect finish. So let's make it happen. It's not following the profile, I mean, the code is right, cutter comp is in there, but the, it's not comping the wheel like it's supposed to. I've pretty much tried everything I know to try except one more thing. We probably should listen next time they tell us we can't do something. We never listen. <laughs> no, this is times of CNC. If they tell us we're not gonna do something, that's when you gotta do it. We're obsessed with perfection. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, I got it. Oh, that's it. It's following it. Finally got it figured out. Oh my God, finally. This is not typical for what this machine's used for, but that doesn't mean you can't think outside the box and get things like this done. Now what I found out was that my program was right. All of the G-code was correct, but it wasn't compensating for the diameter of the wheel correctly. It wasn't making the radius correctly because it wasn't taking the diameter of the wheel into account. Ooh. Check out this finish, guys. Now that's what I'm talking about. The Tirolet wheel really come through. We're using a 150 grit wheel, which is not your typical wheel for surface grinding. Now we were getting a little bit of burn when I first started grinding on this part. So what I did is I lowered my surface footage and increased my feed rate just a little and I got rid of that burn and it come out beautiful. Now I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I had a little bit of trouble programming this because they said it couldn't be done. I was using cutter compensation in the program, but the machine was canceling it in the background for some reason. What I ended up doing was I put the program into a sub program and then the machine was able to recognize the cutter compensation and then it was able to grind the correct radius. They said it couldn't be done, but we got it figured out. Now we're gonna get this off, take it back over to the mill and start engraving our stars and stripes. operation we're using two different tools. The first tool is going to be cutting the stripes, the stars, and then chamfer the outside of the flag. This tool is a runner cutter which has a 90 degree included angle with a 20 thou radius at the tip. The next tool is going to cut the cross hatch pattern for all the red stripes and then come in and cut a straight line pattern between the stars. For this operation we're using a simple four flute ball nose end mill. 
The flag is finally finished. This thing came out so awesome. I couldn't be more happy with it. We had to think outside the box in order to get this thing done, which is really the beauty of machining and what makes this trade so wonderful. The BVM and the Blown both were exceptional. The tear lit wheel put an amazing surface finish on this flag. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. If you like what we're doing, like and subscribe, and we'll see y'all next time.